that, I think, I think we got it. For nearly 70 years, Angel Delgadillo has been a barber along Route 66. When his small town was bypassed with the new highway, it was forgotten for almost a decade, until Angel saved it. Today, he's become something of a folk hero for Route 66 fans. He was part of the inspiration for the movie Cars. But his most lasting contribution is something much less talked about. And that's why Angel's story is history worth saving. How, how did I start the rebirth of Route 66? Yeah. How, did you stu how did this all come about? It wasn't easy. We knew that we were going to get bypassed. We knew that Eisenhower came back from Germany. The general, he says, we need a, a highway like they have in Germany, like the Autobahn. So we knew we were going to get bypassed. And we were bypassed September 22nd, 1978, at about 2.30 in the afternoon. What we didn't know is that we were going to be forgotten by the world. It took me a while to understand why all the tours went to I-40. When they built Route 66, they went around the mountains. When they built I-40, they went right through the mountains. So in traveling Route 66, back then you couldn't travel fast. You were always behind a putt, 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 up and down curves. So we get bypassed and wow. It was a shock. It, it, we were just totally forgotten. In 1979, some of the traveling public, people in their, mostly in their 60s and 70s, began to trickle back into town. And some ended here at the barber shop. This was a pool hall, three pool tables. So they began to trickle in here, and I began to hear men and women tell me the same story over and over. When I was a little boy, when I was a little girl, this has got to be the highway that my parents drove from the Midwestern states to California when it quit raining for about half a dozen years in those states. They all sound like a recording. I heard it once, I heard it twice, I heard it over and over. By this time, we're desperate. It was hard to put beans on the table. So I began to talk about how we get the economy back. And my simple thought was, we asked the state to make Route 66 historic from Seligman to Kingman. My simple thought, right? I talked about it for years. You're going to sit there and wonder, baloney, how can you talk about it for years and nothing happened? No one would listen to me. But then things changed. Angel had an idea. If Seligman was hurting, then so were the other communities, and Angel thought they might just want to help. I told my wife, let's go to Kingman and see, talk to the other little communities, people in the other communities, see what they think. Bingo. I was endorsed. I came loaded with my cannons, took it back to the Chamber of Commerce. I finally got their attention. I walked out of that meeting and called that now famous meeting for February 1987 here in Seligman at the Copper Cart that is now a gift shop. Bingo! We formed the Historic Route 66 Association of Arizona. We assessed ourselves $10 each. I was elected president. Five of us, we gelled. What an accomplishment after years of talking about it. Wow, we were just happy. So the first letter goes to the Department of Transportation in Phoenix. Totally ignored. We did not exist. No answer. By this time, we were having meetings in communities from Seligman to the Arizona-California border, monthly meetings. Sometimes we had 45, 50 people at these meetings. We had the backing of the community. We were all hungry. From here to Kingman, no traffic. Well, since I semi-retired, 19 years ago, when I was 70, I have had time to reminisce with myself, who my parents were, my brothers and sisters. I learned that us five guys that jailed as one, that refused to take no from the state, we all grew, grew up during the Depression, when it was tough. We did not know what the word no meant. We stayed with the state, 
The state finally made it historic in November 1987 from here to Kingman. Since then, our government has made Route 66 in Arizona. They have given it the title of the Scenic Byways and the All-American Highways. There's something magical that happens between a barber and the person whose hair they're cutting. The real knowledge from barbers doesn't come out until they've taken something from us first. As soon as Angel started trimming my hair, he gave me this. The world is looking for yesterday. Our high-tech way of life is beautiful, but we have lost so much of who we used to be. Perseverance, dedication, desire, determination, discipline, that's what will get things done if you want to really succeed at whatever you want to. Well, Angel's popularity only grew in 2001 when movie man John Lasseter showed up to talk about a new film he was making called Cars. So what did you think of the movie, uh, the, the, Cars, the Cars movie? What did you think of that? Were you... He interviewed me. Yeah? John Lasseter, yeah. You know, up until John Lasseter put that in the air, for the world to see it, we got mainly grown people. But after he showed that to the world, we began to get families. So in, in he doing that, and he no doubt did it to make money. It cost him a lot of money to do it. But in, in doing that, he exposed the next generation to America mm. and what we the people can do. I have had American people the international people tell me that they have sat down and watched that DVD, what do you want to call it, with their children or grandchildren four, five, eight, ten, twelve times. The children can't get enough. It was it's so cleverly done. So have you driven <laughs> Sir? Have you driven Route 66 from Chicago to, just to, to LA? Just to Oklahoma City. Maybe one day. <laughs> Go all the way. Um, I'd like to stay home. <laughs> so there's the irony. Everyone knows Angel as the man who saved Route 66, a roadway for travelers and people on the move. But for Angel, it was never really about the road. Like he says, he likes to stay home. And that's the real beauty. It's been about home and family for Angel all along. He didn't save a road. He saved a way of life. I, 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 I can't emphasize enough. People just want some more of yesterday. And Route 66 in Seligman is so much of yesterday. In so doing this, we have touched the hearts, the minds of people from worldwide. And I think we are making such an impression on people from all parts of the United States and the world that I think we, the people, are going to help to keep a little bit more of yesterday. So the world knows that it wasn't the governor that called that now famous meeting. It wasn't a state legislature, a congressman. It wasn't, it was just we, the people, you and I. And this is what is so intriguing to the people, that we, the people, can make a difference. I, I live in Fantasy Island. It's just, uh, it's, it's so sad to be forgotten for 10 long years. I lived it, I didn't read it. I wasn't told I lived it. It's so sad to be, I know what it is to be forgotten. Now it is so beautiful to be remembered. If you're interested, Angel is still offering old school haircuts and straight razor shaves. But like any great barber, the haircut has a price. But the advice between the clips, well, that's priceless. If parents of young teenagers will tell their children, Johnny, Mary, you can do it. If you put your heart into it, you can succeed at anything you set your heart to. This is, what, this is why I live now, to try and help, to tell people, you can do it if you set your mind to it, but you have to pay 
the price. And in so doing this, we have helped to keep the American dream alive. The sky's the limit. There's no doors that will remain closed, I tell these young people. There's a lot of help, but you have to believe in yourself. You can read the full interview and see pictures of my visit with Angel online at historyworthsaving.com. That's historyworthsaving.com. Until next time, I'm Matt Jolly, and that's History Worth Saving.